next aspect is what I call agility. And it's not what I call it, but it's very uh, prevalent in sports and athletics. And that's the ability to move precisely and quickly through space. Now, when I say agility, a lot of times people are like, okay, that's just for athletes. Well, here's the thing. Whether you are an athlete, whether you are an average Joe, whether you are a senior or just a beginner in fitness, if you don't have good agility or the ability to move quickly through space very precisely, you are going to likely fall, okay? We need to have that body awareness to move quickly and stop when we need to, otherwise we're gonna be tumbling all over the place. So I do a lot of agility drills in my exercise classes with seniors to allow them to move their body quickly, move their legs quickly for that exact reason, okay? So some of the excellent agility drills uh, the first one is a very simple one. You can do this at home. All of these, of course, you can do these at home, but you're gonna imagine having three dots in front of you. Normally, I would actually have three colorful dots, and you're simply going to tap in forward in different planes back and forth, okay? So as fast as you can through this position, you're then, of course, going to switch and do it on both sides. So it's gonna be really, really good to work your single leg quickness, so the ability for one leg to move quick. You might notice that if you are somebody who's had a knee replacement or hip replacement, one of your legs isn't as strong and doesn't move as quickly. So this is going to precisely be a good way to do that. Also, of course, you're just standing on one leg. So about 80% of the weight's gonna be in that one leg. And when you're doing that, you're working some single leg strength and stability in that leg that is stable. So that's the first one, agility taps. You can use something on the ground to be even more precise with your taps dots, you could have three towels, whatever you'd like and have at your own home. In addition to this, this next one is one of my absolute favorites. It's called the shuttle run. And you're going to take a cone or just a landmark, place it about five to 10 feet in front of you. Again, I don't have that much space here. It doesn't really matter though. You're going to start from the side and this can look a lot of different ways, but you're going to run up to the shuttle, uh, shuttle, <laughs> you run up to the cone, tap it, run back to your start, tap it, back to the cone, tap it, and then back to the front, boom, you're done, okay? You're gonna do that quickly though, as quickly as you comfortably can. So I'm gonna do it again as quickly as I can, just to show you kind of the speed, fast, good, and break. So whew, it gets you out of breath. So the really cool thing about that too, obviously if you're somebody who can't get down with, uh, you know, they have a lot of pain and that struggles for them, you can, not even bend down, you can just run up to it, tap it with your foot, go down, tap it like that. You can raise the thing you're tapping on. So maybe you have a chair and you're just touching the top of a chair. That's another way you can boost your quickness and still practice this. Um, it kind of is very, very uh, regressionable, I should say. Uh, so you can regress it or make it very, very easy to lots of different variations. I do really like people try to bend over and do it because that works a lot of your lower back muscles that are usually very weak and it works your glutes too, which are usually very weak. So um, doing that helps you to bend over, work that dynamic balance of the ability to bend over while also moving nice and quick. The agility is moving quickly and precisely through space. And the last agility exercise we're going to do, this is... Uh, based off from one of the strength coaches I used to work with at Iowa when I interned there, uh, Phil Johnson, shout out to him. Uh, you can go check out his YouTube channel as well. He's got a lot of great content over there. But what we are going to actually do is grab a tennis ball or some bouncy ball. And then you're going to have that ball right out in front of you. You're going to have it up high. And then you're simply going to drop the ball wait till it bounces and then you're going to race up to it and grab it okay so you're moving quick here drop catch and then of course you can do it on the other hand drop catch and you're trying to move quickly for nice quick precision so a lot of things here we have visual components so we need to have good hand eye coordination that's good for balance also it can be in different planes, so you can kind of do it straight to the side. That's going to be a little tougher, but you're going to be moving in a bunch of different areas, a bunch of different ways. You can make this even tougher by doing two bounces. So bounce, bounce, oop, <laughs> failed there. You saw that. Um, try this again here. Bounce, 
bounce, boom. And of course, since it's really close to me, it's a lot harder. You could kind of throw it in front of you a little bit or what we did when I worked with Phil to improve balance, we actually uh, did it for each other. So we had somebody in front of us and I would say be dropping the ball for him. So if I was working with a client, I would probably have the ball about five feet in front of them. And I would tell them the second this drops, you're gonna race out and come catch it. That's the way you can do it if you have it with other people. But the key here is to have it far enough away from you where you can move your body quickly to catch it. So please, 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 if you're finding some value from this, go ahead, drop a like. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you.